Welcome to Your Company Health Podcast, where we highlight the success stories of entrepreneurs and business professionals. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Your Company Health Podcast, the podcast where we highlight the success stories of business owners and professionals. I'm your host, Andre Wright, uh, the owner of The Wright Consult. Today, we are excited about our guest, uh, Mr. James Washington of U.S. Health Advisors. James, my friend, how are you? I am absolutely uh, wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Andre. Um, you know, it's always good to, to to have a great conversation, especially if it's in regards to something that I know, which I can't claim that I know too much, but I do know about the health insurance industry. So uh, course, I appreciate you having me, and, and, and I'm glad to be here. It's it's a pleasure, my friend. But before we touch on your story. Uh, I want you to set the tone by telling us, you know, what's happening with insurance and, and what are what are some of the important changes? Well, you know, uh, COVID has changed a lot of things for a lot of people, right? Uh, with that being said, when it comes to uh, health insurance, you know, as of, I think it was March 11th, um, you know, the new administration came out with the new American Rescue Plan Act, uh, where that was, you know, really instituted to uh, try to help, um, you know, able Americans, uh, in different areas. One uh, in particular is with uh, health insurance. Uh, so uh, in regards to that, the scope of things that's going on with health insurance right now is that one prior to uh, the new Rescue Act plan, um, you know, I think it was about 9.8% of your gross income if you went through the marketplace. Uh, they've changed that. It's now about 8.5% of your gross income uh, so they've given you a little more subsidy and they have opened up or reopened up the marketplace so that you're able to enroll or um, revisit whatever plan option you have um, uh, up until May 15th. Um, that's helped a lot of able-bodied Americans, especially that have gone through uh, you know, transitions in terms of their job. Another thing that they have also done is um, if you are on COBRA, or have an existing COBRA plan uh, up until about mid um, September, uh, they will also be creating a subsidy for that. So you may be able to uh, forego your uh, COBRA payment up until that point. Now they're not extending it if you have it, you're not gonna have an extension for your plan option, but if you are um, on a COBRA plan, you may be contingent upon your situation, able to um, receive that plan at no charge. So, so, so James, obviously you, you, you touch on a lot and we're gonna try and, and dissect it and, uh, you know, and, 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 and dive a little bit deeper for, for, for our audience. But before we, 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 uh, we go a bit further, I want you to just tell our audience your story and how did you get in, in, in the, in, into the insurance business? Absolutely. Well, you know, with me, I, uh, prior to, uh, being an insurance agent, I was in uh, corporate America as well. Um, so I had, uh, I was in operations management uh, for a few different companies. And, and one thing that was a resonating theme was, you know, usually when it came to health insurance, you know, I was able to, um, because I had a little bit of uh, business development and, uh, you know, I had experience with group insurance, I already kind of had a little idea of that marketplace. Um, but with that being said, you know, you know how it is. As, as you know, your family grows, um, you know, at times you look for better ways to, um, you know, support your family. And at that time, there were vertical changes. I, Well, I would say lateral movements uh, that were in the cards for me. And I had a friend of mine who um, we worked together at one point and he cycled off into health insurance himself and, and uh, started his own uh, brokerage. And he said, uh, James, let me invite you down. You know, he goes, because you have, you're very personable. Uh, you believe and, you know, you usually couple what you do with your faith in terms of being intentional with people that you communicate with. And he said, I think there's a great way that you can uh, not only enjoy what you're doing, but help other people. And um, here goes health insurance, right? So uh, it was a learning curve for me. Uh, because uh, one, with me being in management, you know, usually there's a duties and expectations that you you have for uh, individuals, right? Uh, where in this arena, 
now I am um, asking for your business, right? Asking if I can help you. So uh, it was, it was, um, it was a, a major transition for me, but I'm so blessed and, and happy to have the opportunity to service and help as many people as I can. So, um, you know, making that transition, I definitely had to learn some different, you know, things when it came to individual insurance to round out uh, my knowledge. Uh, but so far, it's been a, a very, uh, it's been a great journey. I, I want to say, uh, 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 James, I mean, this has to be your calling, man. You know, by my, you know, from my interaction with you, it seems like it's a perfect fit. Uh, this <laughs> for you to be in this type of space. You're you're knowledgeable of what you're you're uh, you're you're doing. Uh, you're so so uh, so personable. And it's easy to talk to you, and uh, that's why I wanted to bring you on the show today because I know that uh, our audience is going to learn a lot. What are the services that you offer? So uh, with me with U.S. Health Advisors. Um, you know, that is uh, more or less your private insurance arena, your private insurance spectrum. But as an insurance agent, my job is to best serve uh, the consumer, right? And with that, there are really two ways that you can satisfy uh, sourcing your health coverage. One is through your income, which would throw you primarily on the marketplace, uh, you know, to contingent upon uh, how much you may make uh, you know, gross wise, uh, may, you may receive a subsidy or you may not, right? Other is you also have your short term, your uh, private plan options, uh, which usually are contingent upon uh, underwritten uh, medical, um, you know, uh, questions or your health, right? So there's two ways that you can satisfy your coverage through your income or through your health. I usually uh, have resources where I am able to do both. I can look at every plan option uh, that's either on the marketplace or that may be available through uh, the private insurance uh, uh, market space. Uh, and what I do primarily is contingent upon, you know, the needs of the client. Uh, we can make a determination of what may best suit you, right? Um, there are a plethora of uh, plan options that are available. But when you get down to, uh, when you get into weeds, uh, there's primarily two major, um, uh, you can either go to an HMO plan or a PPO plan. They have EPO plans, but your most, um, uh, I, 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 would, I would say that your most popular uh, networks are HMO and PPO. And that can span from private or marketplace plans. Did that kind of answer your question? Yeah, no, I mean perfectly. Uh, you, I think you you uh, you explain it well. But uh, for for our audience, they you know you're you're talking about the HMO and the PPO. Could you define those uh, you know for us? Absolutely. Well, when you uh, contingent upon um, your insurance provider, there are networks that you can uh, that you they you usually utilize. And your major networks, which would be uh, primarily through group insurance, things like that, is, is going to be a PPO, right? And with a PPO plan, it has a bigger pro uh, network of doctors and hospitals that you're able to um, use your insurance, that you're able to, to go to. Uh, with an HMO plan, it's more of a condensed uh, option. Uh, it's not as vast, not as large as your PPO plans. Uh, generally, if you have a marketplace plan, uh, they are mostly, because it all goes by your zip code and your age, but most uh, ACA plan options are gonna be HMO, right? What that kind of means and what that looks like for you is that, you know, there's a, um, you know, one, if you go outside of your state lines uh, with an HMO plan, you're only covered for emergency services. So once you go out, it's pretty much inoperable. With a PPO, you can go anywhere in the country. You okay. can utilize anywhere in the country. Uh, also, you do not need a referral for a doctor. You can go in and out of network or for a specialist. So uh, with an HMO, you kind of have what we like to say is a gatekeeper, right? So your primary care physician uh, will make all the, will make the determination if um, or make that referral for you. Okay. So the difference is with HMO. You have a smaller network, more condensed. You have a gatekeeper as a doctor, meaning uh, that you need to have a referral to see a specialist. Uh, 
With a PPO, it's, you can go outside of the country. It's a bigger network of doctors and hospitals. And then also, you, don't, you can go in or out of network and still reap benefits from your plan. And you don't need a referral for a specialist. So that, Does that kind that, of make that, sense? No, uh, perfect. And, and, and so that, that makes PPO more expensive then, since it's, it's, it's so open? It, 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 and a lot of times it may, right? Um, contingent upon, um, you know, the area, the doctors, things like that. Uh, yes, but a lot of times PPOs are, are a little bit more uh, expensive than your HMO plans. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. And, and, and James, for our listeners uh, and, and, and our viewers, they're maybe, maybe, maybe saying, watching this and saying, well, uh, you know, there are a lot of insurance agents and, uh, out there you know, trying to help with programs. Uh, so what can you tell our audience? What differentiates you from, from another representative? Well, you know, first and foremost, I, I, I certainly agree. There are a plethora of agents and brokers uh, that you have access to. Uh, the key is finding one that is one licensed and a trusted, one that you know that is working in your best benefit. And so, you know, a lot of times, depending if, you know, what companies they may work for, uh, you know, most interaction with your licensed agents, it's a transact, it's a transactional, uh, you know, it's a transactional relationship. And the reason why I say that is because you may pick up the phone, you may, um, they may call you because you put your information in online and, you know, they get your plan options, they explain your plan options, you pick this plan option and they enroll you in that plan. Well, for me, you know, I usually, you know, with me, like I said, I kind of couple with my faith. So I believe in being intentional, right? We're all here to service and to serve uh, in some capacity or other. And so for me, it is imperative that I do my due diligence by making sure that I take care of the consumer. So my interaction is a little, uh, is a little deeper than that. One, uh, when we first do a discovery call, I like to make sure, you know, that I understand what the needs are of, you know, the individual that I'm working with, whether it's a company, whether it's, you know, a family, or maybe it's a single person. From there, once I get that information, I gather that information, you know, what I will do is look at some of the plan options and, and let them know what their plan options that are available to them. From there, I like to go a step further. I like to do what's called is either a screen share or we can jump on Zoom. And then together, we can look at those plan options. It takes 15, 20 minutes, but we can go over those plan options. That way, if they have any immediate questions or concerns, we can do that. You know, So my um, position first comes from an educational perspective, right? So we wanna make sure that we educate the clients. And so once we do that, uh, then they can make an education, uh, edu uh, educated decision on mm -hmm. what plan options are best for them or their family. And you have a visual too, right? So as we're on Zoom right now, I can uh, pull up your plan options and I'll go through them with you. And, and most people are visual learners, right? So uh, it helps them out tremendously when they're able to you know, see their deductibles, max out of pocket and understand all the little nuances of health insurance that sometimes when you just have a phone conversation, you don't retain everything, right? So uh, I think the visual adds a different component to that. And from there, I am usually tethered to my clients. So every out of the 1,100 or so clients that I have, I have them all in my phone. They all can call me whenever they, uh, except for Sundays uh, from 11 to 1, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they all have my number and I have them programmed in my phone. So that way, if they have any questions, if they need help with billing or claims or anything like that, they can come directly to me instead of talking to a 1-800 number if they don't want to. And then, uh, you know, I can help them navigate all those types of things like and, that. So. And, and James, that's that's great. That's great. Because we all long for that that personal attention in terms of a representative. Uh, by, just, by hearing you saying that I, I, I know the importance of that personal touch, you know, be able to call my, my, my agent at any time when they pick up the phone. So that's a, a great attribute. That's a great. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, fantastic. So I know on the on, on the outset uh, when we started, you you touched a little bit about uh, you know the pandemic, uh, you know the situation mm -hmm. that we're in now. I want, want us to dive in a little bit more. How has this impacted your your client base and, and your business? Let's talk to us a little bit more about that. Well, to be honest, for me, um, I've come across it's I love educated consumers, right? Uh, and so 
uh, many times, um, you know, with people, the pandemic has really put people in uh, peculiar situations because, you know, maybe they were thinking about retiring, right? And they had it, uh, you know, pushed out maybe six or seven months down the line or another year from now. Well, now some of them are taking it early. Some are forced to go into different positions. And so that would put them either uh, where they lose their coverage altogether or they have a COBRA option uh, that is made available to them. Well, unfortunately, when, uh, you know, you may uh, lose your job or you have to transition from your job, you know, the, the COBRA option is a little bit more expensive. It can be because now what that does is that puts that on an individual status as opposed of, to uh, the company paying in 50 percent for your your health plan. Right. So a lot of times it can get a lot more expensive. So with with COVID, it's really um, one. It's made people really do a deep dive into understanding their health coverage and what's available to them, understanding their deductibles you know, understanding their max out of pocket, understanding their waiting periods. Because generally people that are, um, have group insurance or work for major companies, you know, that's a couple clicks. Uh, well, let's just take this plan, you know, and they don't really get in the nooks and cranny of their insurance. Well, now when you have to source possibly your own or it puts mm-hmm. you on the marketplace, um, you may not know what you're looking for, right? A lot of times people don't, you know, they don't understand that. So uh, now it's, I think it's 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 making a lot of individuals take a harder and deeper look and really put things in perspective with their finances when it comes to you know that that arena. Is is there an uptick? Well, absolutely. I'll give you an example with um, telemedicine, which has normally um, been extra fee or attached to whatever plan option you may have, or sometimes they don't offer telemedicine, meaning. Uh, that you can call in your doctor and have a conversation just like this, right? Without going down to physically see him. Well, during the pandemic, a lot of doctors' offices have said, hey, we're not taking any new clients. We're not taking any new patients. And if you are an existing patient, then let's do a telemedicine. Well, if you don't have it on your insurance, it can get pretty expensive, right? There has been a 68% uptick since COVID in telemedicine health, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but people are starting to see just as you're working from home now that some people are a lot more productive at home, right? So some doctors are, are very, are enjoying it because if you have, you know, say you have a sore throat or you have a cough or you have something just, um, pretty trivial, um, you can do a telemedicine call. They can prescribe your medication long as it's not a narcotic or an emergency, uh, to your nearest pharmacy and people are seeing the convenience of that, right? So that's been one thing that's been a uh, huge, um, and now a lot of insurance companies are adding telemedicine. Um, if it's not for a small fee, maybe it may be attached, and it is for you know for free, long as it's not say dermatology or a mental health type of thing, right? So that's one thing in particular. Mm-hmm. But uh, there has been a lot of changes, uh, you know, similar to that. Of course. And, and it's funny that you touch on telemedicine because, uh, you know, I've spoken to a, a bunch of doctors and, and they mentioned the same thing to me, you know, uh, that, that, you know, that seem, utilizing telemedicine has been a huge thing for them now. They even, that it, it definitely increased their, their, uh, their, uh, their, 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 their patient base in terms of the people that they see, because I mean, it's more, it's so convenient now people can just, you know, uh, get up and jump on their computer and, and speak with their doctor and uh, so it's it's so convenient, and uh, it's a, it's it's uh, it just uh, adding to what you you mentioned about the statistics, and, and yeah. it's definitely uh, you know good for the the healthcare industry. Yeah, you have to think too, and you know as I have tried, you know now it, it's it's not a hard sell, you know when you come to your your uh, your clients because they understand, especially if they've had um, experience using telemedicine. Wow, I'm not traveling to go see the doctor. I'm not waiting to see the doctor. I'm not sitting next to individuals where you don't know what ailments or sicknesses they may have, right? (laughs) So uh, it has been a win-win thus far. And I think moving forward, that may be something that you may see uh, more often uh, utilized, um, you know, going forward. No, it it is a big thing. And and as you know, I, I, in my field, digital marketing, I work with a bunch of healthcare practitioners and telemedicine is something that we're, you know, we're doing a bunch of campaigns for because we know that 
you know, doctors, you know, they're, they're, they're seeing the, 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 uh, the positive impacts of that on their business. So they want right. to even uh, do more on that. So uh, great point there. So uh, James, one thing, uh, another thing I wanted to uh, uh, touch on uh, mm-hmm. in terms of the, the, uh, the pandemic, uh, what, what, what is the impact on uh, claims? Because I know that, you know, uh, with this coronavirus, there could be different issues when, when it comes to you claiming something on your insurance. Talk, I know, t- talk about that. Well, and I think what you might be moving to is, is, is more of the end result, right? You exactly. have so many, you see um, so many things that are attributed and due to coronavirus, but they may have had underlying issues and things of that nature, right? But they're all, um, you know, they're all claiming that, you know, at the end of the day, that if Corona had anything to do with it, a lot of times they'll, they'll attach the Corona uh, virus to it, as opposed to, uh, you know, um, you know, a heart attack or, or something like that. Or, you know, uh, uh, if you have um, uh, sarcoidosis or the flu or something like that. But with that being said, I think that, um, you know, one, I know, say, with private insurance, for you to um, source private insurance, there is a, you have to be medically underwritten. So there are a series of medically underwritten questions. You go through underwriting, things of that nature. If you are in that, if you had coronavirus, or if you are um, in a window where you may have had it or you don't have it, that might be a denial for you, right? they may deny you for coverage right uh now on aca it doesn't matter what you have you know they're taking in all uh pre-existing conditions and things of that nature so you know have you seen an uptick in claims um yes obviously but a lot of them are you know attributed to something else right um but they're impacted by COVID. so um you know uh I'm just looking for us to turn the corner. And I think it's very imperative and important for uh, individuals, no matter where you're at, to do your due diligence to stay safe. So if that means, you know, um, wearing your mask, if that means social distancing or even getting the, uh, you know, getting inoculated and getting a shot, then, you know, I strongly encourage folks to do that because that's only going to help the situation and make it a little bit better, right? Of course, of course. And, and I agree with you on that. And, and James, I know you're a man of your your, your stats, and uh, I, I want you to tell us what 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 are the leading claims you're seeing. Right. With the numbers that I do see, generally um, in any environment, whether it's a work or you know, usually they're struck by. And what I mean by that are contusions, you know, back injuries, things like that. Right now, has that changed over a little bit? You know, since COVID, yeah, you know. Um, you know, I, usually your minor stuff you're not worried about, but, you know, usually it's your accidents, right? You're struck by injuries, things of that nature uh, as a major uptick. Of course, you have your heart conditions, um, you know, but that's always been pretty steady, right? That's always been pretty steady in its bucket. But I think, you know, with people being at home, they're doing more stuff at home, they're, you know, being uh, uh, more active, you know, in their neighborhoods and things like that with sports starting back up for kids and, 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 and children and, and the school environment. Um, what I'm seeing, you know, on my side is more struck by type injuries, if that okay. makes sense. No, no, I, I, that uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, you know, uh, so James, as we move down, I, I can't believe time has gone so fast. I wanted to, wanted to tell us some of the best practices to maintain a great premium. Well, for one, it's always best to acquire insurance when you're young. The older you get, the more ailments that uh, you kind of pick up and you develop. Mm-hmm. My best advice is to take, be proactive and to make sure that you take your preventative care very seriously. I'll give you an example. So from 18 to 35, usually uh, health insurance is lower for men, right? Uh, uh, Women go through the child rearing ages, but after you get to 40, uh, around 45, you see a switch. Women's, uh, you know, insurance for women starts to Mm -hmm. decline and that, you know, and and for men, it it gets a little bit more. And so the tables switch. 
And the, uh, the sole reason for that is because men are just not at, that good at preventative care. You know, uh, women are usually, you know, they have their OBGYNs, you know, they get the physicals. <laughs> you know, with us, I, I think, you know, men try to take that stoic, uh, yeah. you know, attitude and, and they wait to the very last minute. Well, you know, a lot of times, you know, now you develop these pre existing conditions. Uh, you know, you develop uh, little ailments that would drive the cost of your insurance up a little bit if you were to source your insurance other than the marketplace. But that's why it's it, it switches because you know, uh, generally that's what happens, you know, preventative care for men goes down, per, 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 uh, excuse me, preventative care stays consistent for women. And that's a disparaging thing. So I would, you know, my, I'm a strong advocate of, of doing your due diligence when it comes to, uh, your preventative care, seeing your doctor, getting your daily checkups or your yearly checkups. And if you're feeling a certain way, go get it checked out. You know, uh, the, the age of home remedies, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, <clears throat> if you are not that, uh, if you are not a professional, uh, really doesn't apply. So uh, I always <laughs> encourage people to make sure that they do their, their due diligence when it comes to preventive care. No, of course, and you're you're so right. I mean, we we as men, we tend to be so macho and uh, oh, we don't need to do this. And I'm okay, right? The wives always, you know, they're at the doctor like every week. You know, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, I'll give you another uh, quick uh, reference. So even with your dental care. You know, something can start out as simple as um, filling a cavity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, however, usually if it doesn't bother you, you don't think about it. Well, you can have 90% um, of your tooth rot out before you fill something, right? Now that turns into a root canal. You might need an implant. And that little filling that you could have attained or could have gotten early on now becomes three or four thousand dollars later with the implant and root canals and everything else. So, mm. do your due diligence and of be course, proactive, of course, right? Of course. And, yeah. and you're 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 so right. And and James, uh, you know, if someone is listening out there. What advice could you could you give us in terms of if when there's an ailment, what what are the first set of uh, things that you should do? What are the important steps? Now, and when you say that, oh, well, let's say, let's put it this way. I always have a check down. You know, first, <clears throat> to realize you get the best out of your insurance. Like I said, with now, there's a 68% uptick with telemedicine. Mm -hmm. I would first go, if it's not an emergency service, if you do not need a narcotic uh, medication, I would do a telemedicine call first, right? You're going to get, uh, unless... Uh, you know, you're going to get more out of that call where they can tell you, okay, I think you should come in to see me. Um, you know, I think it should be the telemedicine call. Uh, then you go in to see your doctor and then your doctor takes the necessary steps from there. If you need to see a specialist, you can go to a specialist. If it needs to be hospitalization, you go to a hospitalization. But a lot of times people will go for the most simple things like a cold or a flu to urgent care. Mm -hmm. urgent care facility is set up just for that nature urgent care that's not urgent care you're going to pay more out of money sometimes your insurance may not cover that urgent care um you know costs so always do your check down first and utilize the services for what they actually are right um so if it is uh borderline uh, if it is severe then you can go to emergency care and then go to the hospital from there uh, or, or do that but uh, i always encourage my clients to do the check down and worst case scenario you can always call <laughs> uh, james fantastic advice uh i want you to paint a picture of your ideal client for for, for, for our audience uh ideal client for me is really anyone who is self-paying um whether that be an independent contractor 1099 um you know small business owner uh, if you're going into business for yourself and you're just not sure if you're coming off a of Cobra, uh, you may be going through a divorce and now you have to source your own health coverage. Uh, those are ideal clients for me. Uh, and when I say self-paying, the reason why I say that is because that gives me an opportunity to see what plan options you have more. Um, you have more uh, opportunities uh, when you are in that position because sometimes people think they're only pigeonholed to uh, the ACA. Well, guess what? If you're self-paying, um, you may not want an HMO plan, right? 
you may have a house in Florida and you want to make sure that you're covered in Florida, you might have children or kids that are in college that go to those uh, that are out of state. So I always say that um, I will work with anyone. My job is to best serve, you know, the consumers who need health health coverage, uh, but more importantly, um, just knowing what's available for you. Uh, it, that's where you come to me, right? So anyone who is actually searching for, for uh, health coverage and has lost coverage, looking to uh, um, see if they can have more comprehensive benefits for their health coverage. Uh, anyone, like I said, who is, is, is in that bucket where they're uh, self-paying or, or, or going through COVID and things like that. So, Yeah, and, and fantastic, James. And uh, you brought a lot of value to the program today. And uh, again, it, it has been a pleasure. Before we go, I want you to tell our audience how you know, uh, people are listening and, and they're watching it. How, how can they reach you? Well, I would say the most, uh, one, uh, you can always, for me, uh, one, my, you can just pick up the phone and give me a call. Uh, my number is 404-819-2706. Or uh, you can visit me uh, at James, um, dot Washington um, at uh, you. Uh, shadvisors.com. Uh, that is uh, also uh, my email. Uh, there, uh, from there, uh, we can definitely connect that way. Uh, I also have um, a company website um, that is uh, w, uh, www.usagent.com slash James Washington. Awesome, awesome, and James, we will we will definitely put that up for for uh, viewers and, uh, and 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 so they can actually see. Uh, but again, uh, sir, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I learned a lot. You provide a lot of value, and uh, uh, as always, it's always it's in, I mean, it's always a good a good thing to speak with you about uh, insurance because because you're the man. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that, uh, <laughs> Andre, and thank you so much for having me. I uh, would love to do it again sometime, uh, but hopefully I was able to provide a little bit of insight, um, you know, into the health insurance uh, world. Uh, but as always, if you want to know more, like I said, please uh, you can just simply get in touch with me. Of course, my friend. Uh, thanks so much. And uh, and we'll we'll uh, we'll talk soon. Hey, thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Please visit our website at yourcompanyhealth.com. Also, you can listen to us on your favorite podcast platforms. Follow us on social media at Your Company Health. And lastly, subscribe to our YouTube channel for new episodes and highlights. Until next time, stay safe.